Well, it's been a while since we last saw the Mission C portable speech experiment I was working on, and that's because I've been waiting for a friend of mine to cut up a board for it. And uh, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, he told me that it was more or less done and we just had to program and assemble the board, so I got off my lazy ass last night and reassembled the entire speaker with the experimental components inside, sans the DSP board, since uh, I haven't assembled the one that's going into this unit yet. But uh, we do have, as you might be able to tell, a basic working speaker. Uh, it's currently running off of a main uh, power supply. I haven't installed the battery yet. It's sitting right here waiting for some protection circuitry since I did decide to actually use some since we are running six cells in series. But uh, this is just a test setup. I wanted to just uh, get some therapy and inspiration out of hearing uh, roughly how it's going to sound just uh, flat playing with an amplifier and nothing else. As you can see on the left there, I just uh, haven't even my bothered mounting any controls and uh, since the DSP board that's in the making is going to be the part that uh, handles uh, both volume control, tone control and the power button, there's really no point in mounting those controls as of yet. But I'm tired of listening to this thing as it is right now, so I'm going to take it back apart. And here's a view of the back of the unit. So what I've done to this box is uh, I've butchered the base parts and I've installed a standard issue 2.5 amp capable laptop power plug in this one. There's a blanking plate made out of one half of a, or rather one quarter of a laptop AC adapter which is screwed into the plate and glued to make it airtight. So I think this is going to make a quite sturdy connection. It feels great when you plug it in and the fact that it's a bit recessed really makes it feel like a quality piece of work even though I'm the one who built it. On the other side of course the other quarter of the laptop panel adapter is going to go and that's likely going to have the USB port which is going to be connected to the DSP board once I get that up and running but that's not actual as of yet so there's just a sock stuffed into the hole. This is of course going to be a sealed speaker since I uh, do have a DSP board, so I'm going to just uh, actively equalize this speaker to get some rather silly frequency responses out of it. But it's uh, depending on what uh, works for best, we might go with uh, some kind of loudness function or just a bass knob. I've uh, made utility on the front panel for two uh, single turn pots, a, an LED and a button, so we do have two knobs to play around with. Now one is obviously going to be the volume control and the button is obviously going to be the power button, but it's going to be talking to a microcontroller, so you can have all kinds of fancy, mystical, multi-press timed things going on with it. Or hell, you might even <laughs> use the pots to navigate some kind of advanced menu system, but since we don't have a display, that's unlikely ever going to happen. Anyway, let's just rip this thing back apart and have a look at the way I've arranged the inside as for now. So, the front bezel pops off with uh, these six screws, like so, and that brings the tweeter out with it, along with its uh, foam rubber gasket, which I am intent on not losing. And beyond that, we need to remove the two base uh, mid speakers in order to actually get any access to the circuitry. When working on this thing, it's uh, of utmost importance to be very, very, very wary of how you handle these screws because you really do not wish, or at least I do not wish, to do any damage to the uh, threads in the fiber board because. Replacing the screws for the uh, woofers won't be too big of a bother since they are recessed, but replacing the screws for the bezel, which also acts to form an airtight seal around here, would really be not a whole lot of fun. Since I basically have to drill six new holes in the bezel as well as uh, find some suitable screws. And behind that, I can see that we've got the power amplifier. I don't remember in which order I put the stuff in, but we can have a peek. Alright, it's really difficult to get a usable tripod shot of this, so here you go. So, over here to the left, we have the, uh, the second of these uh, 
uh, TPA 3116 amplifiers that I ordered since I exploited the other one I've just done the same heatsink modification on this one as I did on the one I reviewed and uh, it seems to be work uh, about as well as the first one so that's uh, providing the roughly two times uh, 20 watts or so that's going to be available uh, to the speakers in this device uh, the actual speaker drivers are 12 ohms so that's why I opted to use the high 22.2 uh, .2 volt uh, battery voltage for this since uh, a lower voltage would just give something like 10 watts uh, per channel of output power and that's just unusable for a speaker that's uh, as inefficient as this is going to be either way moving on uh, in uh, this part of the speaker, this is the top of the speaker, by the way, this is the top, that's the bottom, although it's uh, usually going to be used in its upright position like so. So I suppose it's uh, the right side, the left side, and the top over there, and the bottom over there. Anyway, we've got the uh, power supply, which is a mean well something or the other. I believe it's a 74 and a half watts uh, uh, 24 ish volts. Uh, it's intended for use with lead acid batteries, so I believe it's got a current limiting, but I'm just uh, using it in constant voltage mode, set to just over 27 volts. And uh, this just hooks straight to the mains input over there. So whenever this thing is plugged into the wall, this power supply is going to be active. And uh, over there, mounted to the bottom or left side of the case, just with a few screws going a bit crudely through the outside of it. I didn't manage to recess them quite as well as I did hope to. And we've got the linear battery charger module. Uh, this is just uh, an L200, a relay and a diode, basically, which is provides a much more stable 24.00A volts uh, for charging the lithium battery. And this also deals with the uh, switching of uh, the power supply to the amplifier. Since uh, we are dealing with a lithium battery, I didn't want the amplifier to be connected just straight across the battery. So the relay on that board switches the output of the board from the power supply, when it is connected to grid supply, straight to the amplifier, which gives an advantage of running the amplifier at 27 volts rather than something like 18 to 22, which is what you're going to find with a battery. And it gives the lithium battery more peace to charge without a varying load across it. As soon as you disconnect the power to the speaker, the relay clicks to its idle position and allows current to flow from the battery to the output jack. As you can see we've got uh, three jacks or three euro block uh, connectors there which is they all share a common ground and you've got the I believe the charger to the right, the output in the middle and the battery connector to the left. So in theory actually if I just uh, grab this battery pack which I believe I hooked up correctly, yes indeed uh, the amplifier should turn on and run. It might just go up in smoke. We don't have any fuses or anything right now. And did I hook that up? Yeah, I did hook it up the right way around. Let's see what happens. It works better if you hook up a speaker first. This is not the simplest thing to do one handed while holding camera. And we do have. Life in the amplifier. So it does work. It's going to be very noisy when there's no uh, actual input hooked up to it. And I've verified that the circuit does what it's supposed to, so that means the battery side of things is going to work out just fine. Now the bat uh, actual power lead is going to go first to the uh, combined DSP and power management board, which I've yet to construct, and then on to the power amplifier. So there's going to be a power switch after this board. So when the device is just sitting idle, uh, the battery will have power going to the board, which is going to have a low power microcontroller and a MOSFET for switching power to the big power amplifier. And you just use the power button to turn it on. Completely solid state. 
I've had to all make the power amplifier chug to life and hopefully allow you to produce some sweet tunes. So there you go, that's just a little tiny update on this project. The big thing is going to be to manage to program the DSP thing properly, but uh, I've got some good help when it comes to that. And also to construct it, because it's got about 100 uh, 0805 SMD components to solder onto it, so it's a, a proper good weekend's worth to actually get the board up and running and working and configured and so forth. But I think this thing is going to be quite nice when it's... Uh, all put together. I'm very happy with how well I managed to actually fit all the components inside and there's plenty of room to spare for the DSP stuff over here. Uh, it's going to be a bit of an experiment to see how well the enclosure manages to dissipate the heat from this uh, linear voltage regulator. It won't be dissipating a huge amount of power, just a couple of watts, but we've also got the power supply which uh, might be supplying a fair amount of current when the device is running under full power and charging the battery. But we'll see. It's going to be interesting and fun nonetheless. And here's a neat little trick I just figured out about uh, how to wire up uh, a potentiometer like this, just a mono device. Uh, I don't have any real suitable uh, free conductor wire lying around, but I figured out if you just uh, untwist a Cat5 pair, like so, making sure to untwist it and not just to unrip it, and you can actually just uh, take it with another pair and uh, twist it in. As you keep going, you end up with something like this. A free conductor relatively well twisted cat fiber wire perfect and just before we quit here it is for the front panel facilities installed so yeah, these are two single turn potentiometers with some knobs which are recessed a bit into the wood just because uh, the, the front panel is very thick mdf so i couldn't actually make them work without recessing them we have a clicky type non-latching industrial power switch and uh, this is just uh, a piece of plastic I cut out of a rather thick LCD TV backlight assembly which is just uh, making up a, a bit of a light guide for a coloured LED that's going to go on the inside so it's going to light up like that when the unit is on and possibly blink out some diagnostics when necessary. The potentiometers are also hot glued from the inside just to make sure that they don't accidentally spin when you turn them to the end and use a bit too much force. Anyway, cheerio.